Good Wednesday morning and welcome into my office. Uh, a lot's going on today, so let's get right into it. Yesterday's uh, verse of the day from the Bible app was 1 Peter 3, uh, verse 15. But I want to go from 1 Peter 3, 13 through 16. And I really want us to look at this uh, pretty in depth this morning. Uh, starting in verse 13, it says, Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats, and do not be frightened, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. There's a lot here, and I want to I want to get into it um, piece by piece here. First off, this pretty much dispels the, the argument that God wants us all to be to happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. Because it says, even if you are, you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Um, you have to put yourself out there. Um, you have, we're called here to evangelize and be apologists. Basically, we should be able to give a reason for our hope. And that reason for our hope is, is the gospel of message of Jesus Christ. Um, you should be able to articulate the gospel easily by Jesus was born of a virgin, lived a perfect, sinless life. And though he had no blame, he was God incarnate, and he came for the sacrifice of sin, the new covenant. And he came and he died he, for the, and covered our sins in death and then rose again in resurrection and victory. And his resurrected body then ascended into heaven. And if we believe this, and we can believe it in our hearts and confess it with our mouths, then we have salvation, and it's it's keeps us. It's the wages of sin is death, and the, the gift of God is eternal life. So you have to to understand what we know. We talked about this yesterday. The importance of understanding what you know, knowing what you know, majoring in the majors of our of our faith. Uh, yesterday we started our Bible study in Genesis, and I talked about. Uh, theological hills that aren't worth dying on compared to theological hills that are worth dying on. Um, it's easy to get lost in the weeds and some stuff, that, that, and I'm going to make a firm stand on this, when it doesn't really need to be. Um, when your firm stand needs to be on, on things of, of heaven, uh, things of eternity, sin, uh, those kind of things. But be able to defend your hope. Be able to defend your faith with respect and out of love. Um, Christ never never did any anything out of condemnation. Um, it was always out of love. When he when he asked when he reaffirmed the marriage covenant, uh, he was asked about divorce. And instead of saying, This is the way it should be and this is how it is and this is what it, what it should be, he lovingly said, Okay, well Moses told you, what did Moses tell you? Moses told you to do this, and but, he, but Moses only told you to do this because you weren't able to do what you were told to begin with. But then he said, instead of condemning everything else, he went back to Genesis and reaffirmed that a man leaves his, his family and a woman leaves her family to be united as one. So it's very easy for us to get lost in theological correctness. Um, the need to be right uh, doesn't outweigh the need to show love. And that's what we're saying here in 1 Peter we need to keep a clear conscience. So when people speak against you maliciously, um, it looks bad on them. Um, oh, well, I heard so-and-so did this. Well, now I'm going to think less of you because I know so-and-so is not that way. Uh, there's a lot of cancers right now in, in the American church. Um, I talked about some of them yesterday, and, and I'm not going to get into too many of them today. But the biggest is these street corner bigots. Um, the people that stand on the street and condemn people to hell. We had these traveling folks when I was at Southeast Missouri State, and they would come and they'd set up in the middle of campus and condemn us all to hell. And uh, never really taught out of love. It was always a condemnation of, of sin. Instead of, instead of understanding uh, where we were coming from and looking at, at what we were doing, they just assumed that all of us were guilty of some kind of sin or, or another, and and condemned us all to hell. When I was in Hawaii, uh, I walked by a group as they were getting out of the bus and they were strategically getting ready to set up to, to shame people as they were out enjoying their evenings. 
Um, that's not Christianity. And the Westboro Baptist folks, that, that's not Christianity. Um, anything you do that, that's out of malicious intent um, is not Christianity. There's no love in, in berating people. There is no love in, in beating them over the head with, with a Bible. There's no love in that at all. You have to be able, able to articulate yourself in a way that shows the love of Christ throughout everything you're doing. I may be theologically correct, but if I make you destroy you in the process, what have I gained other than my own correctness? Nothing. Um, we were in, in New Orleans for Mardi Gras a few years back, and, and on, on Ash Wednesday, there was a, a group set up outside of, of the cathedral, and they were yelling at the Catholics as they came in and out, and how condemning the Catholics to hell for their, their beliefs. But meanwhile, there were all types of charlatans. If you've been to New Orleans and you've been in Jackson Square, there's all types of charlatans around them that are fortune-telling and tarot cards and all this other stuff. Um, and they're not condemning them. They're just yelling at the Catholics. So there, there's, no, there's no love there. And there, that's, that's the main thing I'm trying to get here, is we should be able to, one, stand up for our faith, evangelize our faith, but do so in love and, and be a good apologist. And to be a good apologist, you have to do so in love. You have to have knowledge of the word, understanding of the scripture, but you have to, to do everything you do in love. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together this morning. Lord, we ask now that as you, as you be with us, as we, as we go through our week and you, you bless, our, bless our lives, Lord. You know the needs of our hearts, Lord. You give us Give us those things that we need, Lord, and, and keep us from the things that we don't. Lord, I ask that you be with each and every person watching this video and the prayer concerns they have, both spoken and unspoken. Lord, I ask that you allow the peace that passes all understanding to fall on, on everyone who watches. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It is Wednesday night. Tonight, we are going live tonight. We've got Kids Club uh, starting at 530 We've got adult Bible study at 6, and our praise team will meet at 7. So we've got all kinds of activities for the whole family tonight. So please come on out. Uh, this will be every Wednesday night, and we'll, uh, we're going to get some good study. If it's like yesterday, the adult Bible study was very good. Uh, we made it through the first two chapters of the book of Genesis, and um, really got a deep, I think, understanding of, 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 one, what we believe, and two, why we believe it, and how powerful God really is, and, and that all power that was displayed in Genesis chapter 1. So, come on out tonight at 5.30. Uh, I hope to see you all this evening. That being said, I hope you have a terrific Wednesday, and remember, above all, you are greatly blessed and highly favored.